Okay, so uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. So uh, today's webinar is about cloud native APIs, the API operator for Kubernetes. So I'm Pubudu Bunatilika. I'm a technical leader at WSO2. So today I have uh, Dinusha Ditsanayaka. He's a senior software engineer at WSO2. Okay, now let's look at the today's uh, agenda. So we'll be looking at briefly explain about Kubernetes, and then we'll be discussing on exposing services as managed APIs, and then we'll be looking at Kubernetes operators. So what are these Kubernetes operators? And then we'll be looking at the API operator for Kubernetes, and then we'll be discussing on the custom resources which we are introducing as a part of the API operator. And then uh, we'll be discussing on the deployment modes for the APIs. And then we'll discuss the need for the API operator for Kubernetes. So we'll be looking at why you should use the API operator for Kubernetes when exposing your services as managed APIs. So uh, Dinusha will be doing a demo on API operator. So it will help you to understand how this operator is being used and how you can use the API operator in your microservices, deployments, etc. Okay. So Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and managing containerized workloads across multiple host machines. So this is basically developed by Google. So they have been worked with the workloads uh, in production with the experience they gained throughout 15 years. So they have come up with this uh, project. So uh, the in basically when you are deploying an application in container and then you need a container orchestration uh, system that and that's where Kubernetes come. So if you take Kubernetes project, it is a uh, highly uh, where the lot of external contributors contribute to pro this project and the success basically depends on these contribution that is coming across around the world so that's about kubernetes so if you want more details you can read how kubernetes works and how what are um, what people have done with kubernetes okay let's uh, take a user story Let's say uh, you have an online shopping store. So uh, for this shopping store, you have developed several microservices such as products microservice, inventory, review. So these microservices uh, can be developed in different programming languages such as Ballerina, Node.js. So those are deployed in Kubernetes as microservices. And now you want to expose some set of microservices as products like like the APIs. So you want to expose products microservice as products API and inventory microservice as inventory API. So the basic idea is that if you take today's digitalized world, a lot of and most of the applications are depends on the APIs. So if you want to expose your service to the outside world, what you can do is you can expose your service as an API so that other external users can use your service. So when you are going to expose your service as a managed API, you basically need to apply security. You basically need to apply rate limiting and maybe you need to apply mediation. And also, you need to have an API marketplace for, for where API application or the API usage can be done with API discovery. And also, you need the API documentation as well. So this is where the usage of API operator comes in. So what we discussed there, so you can achieve this with the API operator um, in Kubernetes. So before we go to the API operator, we'll discuss the Kubernetes operators. 
so operators are software extensions to kubernetes that uses the custom resources for packaging deploying and managing applications so kubernetes has introduced extension points from their platform where you can come up with your own custom resources and custom controllers for packaging deploying and managing application so similar to i think if you are familiar with the kubernetes you may have familiar with the deployment definition deployment jammer or the service jammer so likewise you can come up with your own custom resource definition for particular application so this basically hides the deployment complexity so if you are let's say if you are deploying a api gateway so then you need to create the deployment ml and service ml and you need to know uh, how to cluster the gateway but with operators you hide the deployment complexity now you don't need to worry on how you deploy a particular application and another advantage is that you don't need the domain specific knowledge for application management if you are if you want to deploy api gateway then you don't need to worry about how api gateway works and how you can use to like how the api gateway management has to be done so these are the some of the key advantages when you use kubernetes operators uh, if you go to the operator hub.io you can see a lot of kubernetes operators that are available today so uh, you can use those and uh, in the future we'll be pushing our api operating kubernetes uh, for in our operator in the operator hub so that you can use from there as well okay so the api operator for kubernetes so this makes the apis a first class citizen in the kubernetes ecosystem this provides fully automated experience for cloud native api management and one key thing is that this basically has uh, the open api definition or what we call the saga definition is used as one single source of truth so if you want to expose your micro service as an api what you need to have is an open api definition for your microservice so um, this is what we have at the moment so in the example we have product microservice inventory and review so these microservices what we were used to have is we had consumers which directly access these microservices in there you don't have access control but with the api operator it will deploy an api gateway for your microservices so earlier the microservices and the consumers interact directly but now the microservices will not directly interact with the api consumer instead of that consumers will interact with the api gateway so this applies security rate limiting monitoring and also mediation so similar to the basic stuff so your microservices and the api gateways resides in the um, data plane and if you come to the control pane you have the key manager which is a token service which you can use to generate tokens and you have the traffic manager which does the rate limiting for your apis in the management plane we have api publisher that's where api developers and product managers come and and uh, do the api lifecycle management and you have the API uh, developer portal where the application developers or the external users come and discover the APIs and they can subscribe to APIs as well. Then uh, finally, you have business insights using a API analytics server. You can 
get the business insights for your API. So this is the ecosystem built upon with the API operator. So as I explained, you have these three planes, data plane, control plane, and management plane with the API operator. Okay, let's look at the API operator overview. So in here, what if we want to expose uh, microservice as an API, what you should do is you should uh, provide this as to the API command line tool. So API CTL is the command line tool which is developed by the WSO2 API manager team. So this will interact with the Kubernetes to deploy your um, Saga definition in Kubernetes. So you can use the command API CTL at API and minus in and give a uh, API give a name for your API. Then you can give the location of the Saga file in here. So once you do that, it will deploy a API custom resource definition in Kubernetes along with the config map. The config map contains the Saga definition. So each of these custom resource definitions. So we basically introducing four custom resource definition. One is API, one is target endpoint, and we have security and rate limiting. So each of these custom resource definition align with the custom like controller. So API custom resource definition goes with the API controller. Similar to that, you have the target endpoint custom resource definition that goes with the target endpoint controller. So we have four custom resource definitions along with the four uh, cu custom controllers and those have a different uh, task that goes with the custom resource definition. So once you deploy this um, Saga definition to the API operator or the, in Kubernetes, the API custom resource definition is getting deployed and the API controller will in start um, consuming this API custom resource definition. So API controller um, does two main tasks. So first task is to, it will run a Kaniko job. So the Kaniko uh, is a Google uh, tool which uh, basically builds a Docker images in Kubernetes. So um, once the Kaniko job is started, it will create a Docker image for your API micro gateway based on the Saga definition you provided. So once the Docker build creation is done, it will push the Docker image to the Docker hub. So once that is done, so uh, API controller will create deployment service and HPA. HPA is the hot, uh, horizontal pod auto scaling policy. So it will create those resources for your micro gateway and deploy those resources in Kubernetes. So once that is done, you will get a, uh, a pod which has the API micro gateway uh, container so uh, so what we started is that we want to expose a microservice as an api then we gave the saga definition to the api command line tool so once you deploy that in kubernetes you will get a api gateway that runs in a pod in kubernetes so that's the basic flow that will happen and use on is giving a Saga definition for the API command line tool. So um, I'll uh, explain the custom resource definitions, how um, we have uh, come up with. So uh, we have four basic custom resource definition, API security, rate limiting, and target endpoint. So if you take the API custom resource definition, so API has the um, holds the API related information. So 
this contains the those saga definition uh, config map name and uh, number of replicas that means number of gateway instance or the gateway containers you want and it has the mode as private chat mode so we have three modes like uh, private chat sidecar and share so i will explain those modes in the coming slides so this is the basic api definition and if you go to security custom resource so the security holds the security related information so let's assume that you want to expose your microservice as an api and then you want to secure that api with jwt now to do that what you can do is you can come up with a security policy like this you can define a type as jwt and you can define a uh, issuer as here and also you can provide an audience and finally you need to provide a certificate uh, of that jwt issuer so you can create a secret in kubernetes with this certificate file and then you can under the certificate uh, section you can give the secret name so once you deploy this security definition in kubernetes so it will do some uh, the security control controller will uh, do some configurations and if you want to apply this security for your api what you really need to do is under the security section in the open api definition you need to give the uh, this security name here so simple as that you can apply any security policy you want by giving the name of that security policy so um, so the in this api operator you have the o2 token security option and also basic code so similar to this you can come up with the definition and then apply that security policy in the open api definition so uh, similar to the security we have the rate limiting so the rate limiting custom resource uh, holds rate limiting related information so you can um, apply rate limiting for your for your api as well so you can come up with the rate limiting policy so in this rate limiting policy it allows four requests per minute so this is a sample definition so you can apply rate limiting at application or api or subscription then if you want to apply this in for your api then you can define uh, in the open api definition you can define a vendor extension called xws to throttling tier and then use this uh, rate limiting policy name in the open api definition so simple as that you can apply any rate limiting policy for your api so let's uh, look at the target endpoint custom resource. This uh, holds the endpoint related uh, information. So um, this is something very important. So uh, let's say you have developed a target endpoint or a backend service and um, you have the Docker image. Now, basically, if you want to deploy these in Kubernetes, what you can do is you can write your own deployment YAML and service YAML. So without doing that, you can define a target endpoint which contains the uh, protocol and the port of that your service and you can give the Docker image of your uh, microservice and you can give the count as how many uh, containers you want or the how many ports you want, then you can select the mode as private jet or sidecar. So if you deploy this in private jet mode, as soon as you deploy the target endpoint in Kubernetes, it will deploy your microservice. This is Google the products a microservice in Kubernetes. But if you deploy in sidecar mode, and then you can give this uh, definition or the, you can uh, use this target endpoint in your uh, 
uh, open API definition or the Saga definition. So you can specify using the vendor extension and call XW so to production endpoints and you give the same name what you use to deploy the target endpoint and then you can set the mode as site count. So what will really happen is when you deploy this API, it will contain a one port with two containers. So the one container has the API micro gateway and the other container has uh, the microservice. So like that, you can deploy in private jet mode or sidecar. So that's how the target endpoint can be used for open API definitions. So um, in here, so we have three modes for the APIs. One is a private jet and sidecar and share. So if you look at the private jet mode, so the in private jet mode, uh, you have a one port for the micro gateway container and you have separate ports for uh, your microservice. So uh, you can separately scale these uh, ports. So, so you're, you will get scaling your micro gateway separately and your microservices separately. And you have a dedicated gateway for the API in this private jet mode. So uh, in the sidecar mode, as I explained earlier, you have a one port and you have uh, two containers in there as in the picture. So you can, if you want to scale the microservice with container, microservice with the gateway, then this is the pattern you should use it. So in this case also, you have a dedicated gateway for the API. So in the shared mode, the difference is that, so in the previous modes, we had one API in the micro gateway container, but with the shared mode, you can have two or more APIs in the single micro gateway container. So the label based grouping will be used. So this is uh, this will this mode will be available in the from the next release. So um, private jet and sidecar is supported at the release version of API operator. So let's look at the need for an API operator for Kubernetes. So this basically hides the API deployment complexity. Now you don't need to come up with deployment ML, service ML for deploying your API gateway in Kubernetes. So if you use API operator, you will get that. You will deploy your API gateway in few minutes. So this simplifies exposing a managed API for a service. And this handles auto scaling for API gateway. So your API gateway will auto scale based on the CPU load. So you don't need to monitor and scale it manually. Uh, this is a one key advantage. And you can switch between private and sidecar mode deployment patterns easily. And also you can deploy and manage your backend services very easily with the API operator. And this also helps you to easy, easily promote APIs between the environment. So if you want to promote your dev, promote your API from dev to QA, within few clicks, you can do it. So this makes the life cycle, so the, this makes the developer experience more uh, useful and it will enhance the way you used to do things now. So um, we'll uh, move to the demo. So I'll hand over to Dinusha to start with the demo. So Dinusha, over to you. Thanks, Google. So let's go ahead with the demo. So today we'll be demonstrating how you can expose a microservice in Kubernetes cluster using the API operator. So here I have broken down the demo into few steps. First, we'll be deploy microservice on Kubernetes cluster. Uh, then we'll configure API operator, API portal, token service, and monitoring artifacts on Kubernetes cluster. And then after having uh, all those things configured, uh, then we'll be exposing the microservice as a managed API. Then 
uh, we'll push this API to the API portal or API marketplace so that the consumers can come and discover the APIs. And at last, we'll invoke the API and we'll see the statistics of this API to get the business insights. So as prerequisites for the demo, so we'll be needing, needing kubectl installed on our machine to communicate with Kubernetes cluster. And we need a Kubernetes cluster with version 1.12 or above, and it should have eight GB of memory and two virtual CPUs. And we need a Docker Hub account. Uh, the reason for having a Docker Hub account is uh, the API image, which is being created from the API operator, needs to be pushed to a remote uh, Docker repository. Uh, for that, we need a Docker Hub account. And we need API operator distribution, and we need an API command line tool. The need of having an API command line tool is to interact with API operator as well as the API portal or API marketplace. So I have configured this stuff, so I'll be moving to the uh, demo. So this is the uh, GitHub repository for our API operator. So here in the root readme, we have the quick start guide and uh, in the introduction sec section, we have uh, a little bit of overview of that. And here uh, we have a, a demo scenario. So during this webinar also, we'll be demonstrating the same scenario with uh, some uh, advancements. So it would be easier for you to follow on your own at a later time. So I have, uh, already download the api operator for distribution and the api command line tool so first i'll be going going inside the api operator distribution so every command i'm executing i will be executing them by being here on this api operator distribution home so as the first step uh, we'll be deploying the sample microservice so we just have to execute this command and it would create the uh, Kubernetes service and the Kubernetes deployment related to the products microservice. So what actually this microservice, products microservice does is it uh, lists uh, the available product details. Uh, or if you want to get, uh, get details of a specific product, you can uh, get those details from this microservice. So once you apply this command, the, uh, as I mentioned, the relevant Kubernetes uh, deployment and services uh, are getting created. You can verify that by uh, listing the available ports. Then you can see that the product uh, port has been created and it, it is ready for accept the traffic. And to consume this from uh, uh, outside uh, party, uh, this needs to be exposed from a Kubernetes service. Uh, to be aware of the Kubernetes service, you need to list the Kubernetes services available in the default namespace. Then you can see that the product microservice uh, has been exposed to the outside using the load balancer type. In order to invoke that, this uh, external IP should be resolved. So it would take uh, some time to get resolved. Oh, it has already been resolved. And here you can find the uh, command to invoke this microservice. So I'll be using these commands. So um, so I need to replace this external IP from the IP mentioned in the Kubernetes service here. So I'll be replacing that. So once I do that, I can uh, get the list of available product details. So which means our microservice is up and running uh, successfully. And then uh, we are moving to the second step, uh, which is installing the operator. So we just have to execute a simple command, then it would deploy the necessary artifacts related to the API operator. Uh, this API operator is deploying on the Kubernetes cluster a namespace called WSO2 system. So by executing this command, we are creating this namespace, we are creating the deployment uh, of the API operator, and we are creating the cluster role, cluster role bindings, and service accounts associated with the op API operator. And also with this command, we'll be deploying the custom resource definitions of this API operator. As Pogdi mentioned earlier, the API security rate limiting and target endpoint custom resource definitions will be deployed using this command. 
you can see those artifacts are getting, getting created. So those have been uh, deployed successfully. Uh, and so now I'm moving to a very important part of our uh, demonstration, which is configuring the Docker Hub account. In order to API operator to be uh, worked uh, properly, you need to configure the Docker Hub. It is an essential part. So you need to configure these Docker Hub credentials in two places of the distribution. So there's a file called controller confirmal which resides in apm operator slash controller configs and there's another file called docker secret template uh, which resides in the same directory. So I have opened up these two files. So this is the controller confirmal. Here uh, there's an entry called docker registry. Here this value should be replaced with the docker hub username. Uh, of your account. So in my case, my uh, Docker Hub username is Linux Shady, so I am putting it here. And uh, then uh, I need to open up the other file, Docker Secret Template. So I have already uh, opened up it here. Here under the data section, I need to enter the base64 encoded username and the password of my Docker Hub account. So you can uh, uh, you can use your command line tool or something and uh, encode your uh, credentials and enter them here i have already configured those things and now uh, i'm going to apply these configurations on my kubernetes cluster so previously we deployed the artifacts related to the api operator now we are deploying the configurations related to the api operator so these uh, configurations are getting deployed so this this include the default uh, security as well so if we don't enforce any security for the apis that we are deploying on kubernetes cluster the default security that we are deploying on in this step would be applied to the apis that we are deploying so we have successfully configured the api operator and in step three it says install the api portal and secure token service but in this demo, I'm going to demonstrate, demonstrate something more, uh, which is the API portal with secure token service and monitoring service. For that, uh, I can't use this existing command. Because of that, I have already prepared some commands. So I'll be uh, skipping the step three mentioned in here and I'll be executing the, the commands that I prepared on my own. So I have listed those commands here. So first I have to deploy the analytics related configurations on Kubernetes cluster. So I am deploying the API operator related analytics configurations on the cluster. I have deployed that. Then I am deploying the namespace. Uh, similar to API operator deployed in the namespace called WSO2, the API portal token service, the monitoring service are getting deployed in a namespace called WSO2. So I am deploying the WSO2 namespace and then I am deploying the database deployment. So this would be basically used by uh, API, uh, sorry, analytics platforms and the API portal. So uh, this should be in the uh, ready state before I proceed with the uh, further deployment. So I am just checking the available ports in the WSO2 namespace and the uh, database deployment uh, has been deployed successfully and it is in ready state. So uh, I'll be executing the, uh, so now I'm deploying the analytics deployment. Uh, the worker and the dashboard are getting deployed on the Kubernetes cluster and I'm deploying the API portal. Okay, those things are, deployed successfully now if you list the ports available in the wso2 namespace you can see the uh, api portal the dashboard which process the data and sorry a worker which process the data and dashboard which visualize the data are uh, deployed in the kubernetes cluster this usually takes around one minute uh, to up and running fully up and running so uh, while that happens, let me explain uh, something interesting. So 
uh, out of these three deployments the external consumers would be interacted with two of the two of these deployments one is the api portal service and the uh, and the other one is the dashboard service uh, because of that these two uh, deployments should be exposed to the outside uh, consumers uh, using kubernetes service for that we are using kubernetes node port service type so if you uh, list the services available in this uh, namespace sorry uh, you can see uh, that the wso2 api or the api portal has been exposed to the outside using node port type and the dashboard also has been exposed to the outside using the node port type uh, when you expose uh, services to the outside using node port type you only need a uh, ip of one of the nodes in kubernetes cluster to access these services so once you uh, have uh, that uh, one of the ips you need to do the uh, uh, host mapping in uh, etc host file so i have already done that i have already taken one of the ips in the uh, nodes in kubernetes cluster and i have uh, done the uh, host mapping for api portal and the dashboard so you need to do that so once you've done that uh, once you've done that you need to configure the api controller we already have uh, downloaded the api uh, command line tool so you need to extract that command line in order to execute it from anywhere in your file system you need to give the location of the extract folder as a system path variable systems path variable so once you do that uh, you can verify the installation by executing this command then it would list all the available uh, functionalities of that api so uh, for that of that uh, api ctl tool uh, so in this uh, in the beginning of my demo i mentioned that this api ctl is capable of interacting with api operator as well as uh, api portal so by default it's supposed to uh, work with api portal in order to work this with api controller you need to set its mode for k test as mentioned here so if you execute this Uh, its mode will be set to Kubernetes. Once this is, this mode is set to Kubernetes, you can replace the Kube CTL with API CTL. For example, if I want uh, if I want to know the ports available in the default namespace, I can use this command. So it would list the available ports. Now that we have uh, configured them successfully, uh, I'm going to expose this microservice as a managed API on Kubernetes cluster. So we already deployed our product microservice. So now we need to deploy this as a managed API. For do that, we only need uh, an open API definition of the particular microservice. Uh, within our distribution, we are providing or we are shipping some sample scenarios. Uh, within that, you can find the relevant open API definition for the product's microservice. I have already uh, opened up uh, it in here so you can see the swagger definition uh, of that particular api uh, in order to work any of these apis with uh, api operator api definition with api operator you need to have mandatory two vendor extensions one is xws to base path uh, we, this basically depicts the base path which gateway exposes the api this is a required parameter and you need to define it in the api level and you need to uh, specify the production endpoint xws2 production end, endpoints extensions uh, this basically specifies the actual backend of the service this this is also mandatory but you can either define this in the uh, api level or in the resource level you can see we have two resources one is product and one is product slash product id so you can either define the this in the uh, resource level or api level but for the demonstration purpose i have defined that in the uh, resource level 
And now that we have configured them uh, properly and now we have the API definition at our hand, uh, I'm going to deploy this API on Kubernetes cluster. So I have to simply execute this command by passing the API's name and the Swagger definition, then it would create the API. So I'm creating this API. So you can see that the API is getting created. So what is actually happening is if you list the ports running here, uh, you can see that the something with Kaniko is getting created, which is the Kaniko job which Kubudu mentioned in his slides. This this port basically responsible for creating the API image and pushing that to the configured uh, Docker remote repository. So what actually happened here is the API operator would uh, build an image. The image name uh, image name would be uh, this name that we provided in the command and the version of this swagger swagger files or the api definition so the api operator would check uh, if if there's any image available with this combination in the configured uh, docker repository if that image is available the api operator would not create uh, or not build the image from scratch it would just pull the image from the docker uh, repository and create its deployment but if the image is not present in the docker repository what it does is it creates this kaniko job and this kaniko job will build the api image from the scratch so if you want to check the logs of this pod and to see what's happening inside you just have to execute the kubectl logs and the pod, uh, name of the pod and here you can see uh, now the uh, api is uh, this api uh, image is getting created uh, in the google cloud actually this uh, kaniko job takes around one minute but uh, if you're trying it on minikube uh, it might take uh, a, a little bit more time around two minutes or three minutes depending on your infrastructure availability so once uh, once this is done uh, it would pu uh, push uh, this image to the configured Docker repository. So you can see here that uh, the uh, Kanika job is uh, completed. So if you go here, this is my Docker, Docker Hub repository. Here you can see the image has been pushed. Now you list the, if you list the ports available here, you can see that the API, uh, the uh, the API, the deployment related to our API definition is getting created. Okay, now it is in up and running state so in order to access this we need to be aware of the kubernetes service of this particular uh, deployment to get uh, to get an awareness of that we need to list the available service in the default namespace here you can see that the online store has been exposed to the public uh, using the load balancer service type but its uh, external ip is still in, uh, in its pending service type so once this is resolved we can uh, invoke this uh, it has already been resolved and okay, sorry. so now I am going to do what I am going to do is I am going to now we have everything here I am going to execute the I am going to call this microservice so previously what we did was uh, we invoke the microservices directly now we are going to invoke the microservices uh, the product microservice using uh, via the uh, API gateway deployed on the Kubernetes cluster. So when we invoke that, it says missing credentials. So what actually happened is, so even though we didn't specify in a security policy in our API definition, uh, the default policy that we uh, enforce while configuring the API operator is getting applied for this particular API. So because of that, 
the api is the this this API has been deployed on the Kubernetes cluster in a secure manner. Because of that, we can't access it directly without a valid access token. In order to access this service, we need to have a valid access token. So, uh, in this API, uh, uh, in this documentation, we are providing a sample token. You you can uh, use it for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh, so this is a, that is a valid sample token. So I am providing it here, and I am uh, invoking the uh, same command, uh, same curl command. Okay, sorry. I have made a mistake. Okay. So I'm going to invoke the same command with some minor adjustment, with some header. Here you can see uh, the API is getting invoked probably, properly. Uh, now in, or, in order to uh, in order to make this available in the API portal so that the consumers can come and discover the API, we need to push this into the API portal. To do that, uh, we need to uh, use API CTL tool. So you need to execute this command. So once you execute this command, once you, once you execute this command, the deployed API portal has been added to the API controller or API command line tool as an environment. So here, what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm adding this environment uh, with the name of ke test so here i am providing certain endpoints of that particular deployment such as dcr endpoint token endpoints or in some api endpoints so we can see that this api this environment has been added successfully so once this is added what we have to do is we have to create a api project using the uh, same api definition so once once that is uh, there, so we just created the API project. So if you if you open that up, uh, and uh, this is the API project that I just created. Here under the metadata section, you can find the Segar definition of the our API file, and this is the metadata section. If you open this file, you can see that the status of the API is in the created state. So in order, in order to make this available in the API publisher or API portal, you need to make this as published. So once you do that, once you do that, uh, you need to execute uh, this command. And if, if you, uh, uh, for the first time, I need to log into the uh, certain uh, that particular environment that I'm execu executing the command zone. Uh, after successfully login, the API would be imported to that particular environment successfully. Okay, the API has been Im uh, imported for that uh, K test environment successfully. So I can visit the uh, environment uh, using uh, this link. Yeah, I can see the particular API has been uh, deployed successfully. So the, this is where the consumers or app developers come and explore the API. So if I go into this API, I can I can see the documentations available and the, what are the resources available of this API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an application. I need to log into the system first. So I'm using default credentials. So I log into a log into the dev portal and I'm creating an application. And I, I subscribe the API and I'm generating the keys. So what I'm does uh, what I'm now doing is I'm replacing the previously generated token with the new one. So I already replaced that. I am executing the same command. Uh, 
and I should be able to uh, get successful response. Here you can see that I am getting successful responses. So if I call this endpoint with uh, the other endpoint, you can see that I am getting a detail specific to that product. So this is the basic scenario that we want to cover today. And uh, if you want to check analytics, you need to go to the analytics dashboard. And if you go to the publisher, you can you should be able to see the APS that we have deployed and the apps and the subscriptions available, uh, etc. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the basic and the essential scenario that you need to be aware of when you are using the API operator for Kubernetes. Uh, so apart from that, uh, we have uh, provided you with a lot of sample scenarios. So uh, as Pukud mentioned, we have the rate limiting capability, so you can add uh, different types of rate limiting policies to limit the access for your APIs, and you have different deployment patterns uh, that uh, you can use in your uh, environments, and we have different uh, protocols that the APIs can be secured, and we have mediation policies uh, uh, application also. So if you want to apply or if you want to validate your payloads, if you want to transform your payloads, you can use our API operator. So you can follow these samples. So within within each of these samples, you can uh, find README read me. So you can simply have to follow those README and uh, you would be uh, able to try out our API operator different aspects. So yeah so that is it with the demo scenario and uh, so you can try out as i mentioned by visiting our uh, github repository it has a lot of things uh, how you can configure additional parameters and how you can uh, uh, actually debug the api operator uh, what you need to be aware of while debugging the api operator so those are the things that you can uh, uh, familiar with if you uh, check out the repo mentioned here. So, who could do? Yes, so uh, we have moved to the questions and answers section. So, we have uh, several questions on uh, we have a question on how to update an API. So, uh, as we have a command to add an API similar to that, we have an update command so you can. Use the update command with the saga definition so it will create a docker image so the same flow and uh, it will deploy the updated uh, API gateway in Kubernetes so this updating part will happen in rolling out manner so the it won't affect your request so uh, that's uh, how it works so uh, so we have another question uh, about uh, supporting GraphQL instead of uh, Saga in Dev Portal. So, um, so the GraphQL uh, APIs are not yet supported in uh, Micro Gateway. So that support will be added in the future. And uh, we have another question on uh, whether this API operator work with uh, API Manager 2.60. So uh, we have currently released this with the API Manager 3.0. So the if you want to try out Micro Gateway, then you can use the Micro API Gate API operator with the with the API Micro Gateway. But uh, with API Manager 2.6.0, so uh, you can use the other command line tool which you have used uh, previously with API Manager 2.6.0. So uh, Another question is, uh, can I use Minikube to try this? Yes, you can use Minikube. So uh, you can use anywhere where you can run Kubernetes. So it works everywhere you have Kubernetes. So um, so another question is, can I use a node port to access the API? So once you expose microservice as an API, so we basically expose this particular API in a, um, with the load balancer type so so node port is not supported like uh, so the all the apis will be exposed as 
load balancer type so so this is uh, something like um, uh, what we have done intentionally so we cannot expose these in node port and give in because node ports are limited so and uh, another question is uh, how to change the hpa values or the horizontal port auto scaling value so in the demo dinusha mentioned uh, how you can uh, how you can deploy uh, controller configs so if you check out the controller configs you can change those values from there and um, another question is how to change the default security policy so uh, even if you check the default security policy in the controller configs you can change that otherwise you can define your own security policy and uh, apply that to your open api definition or the saga definition so um, another question is to can i use api operator with istio yes uh, this is something uh, you can um, use and this is somewhat limited um, option like you can use the api operator uh, in a permissive mode that is with the, if you have enable strict uh, tls in the istio section uh, istio then you cannot use that but if the permissive mode is on then you can use api operator with istio so uh, in the future we'll be supporting this uh, api operator with istio that will uh, work seamlessly if you are interacting with microservices so then uh, another question on how to apply api mediation for an api so we have a sample scenario in the sample sections you can try how mediation can be applied to an api so um, that's uh, what we have got here so uh, so uh, you can uh, join us through our slack channel so we have an invitation link in this QS talk so you can try this and you can join us on slack and ask any question if you encounter so we would like to invite you and try this out and uh, let us know your feedback so so we in the couple of uh, coming months we'll be improving this and uh, we hope to get your feedback as well so uh, thank you very much for joining the today's webinar so i hope you all the uh, thank you for joining with us.